JA. I am Devontae Davis and today we'll be learning a little bit about the acting industry and a lot about our brilliant movie star, Ooh. actress, Chantal Jackson. Oh, wow. well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Hey, Shan, how are you doing Hi, today? Hey, how are you? I'm good. It's cool today. I appreciate that. Yeah, until the sun comes up again. Until then. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so tell us a little bit about who the real Chantal Jackson is. Not the one we see on film, not the one we see on our television, not the one we see on the stage in the plays, but who are you? Chantal is a sleeper. Really? I love to sleep. I was I, think not not, I know. It's one of my hobbies. Whenever I get free time, I sleep. Okay. Um, I also love to eat. KFC spicy burst. Yes! KFC spicy wings with a no bigger person. <laughs> um, and I love to socialize. I'm a class clown. I love to laugh. I love to make people laugh. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I started drama in the first place because I love to be expressive. I yeah. love to express myself. Um, and I grew up very isolated. I'm an only child and an only child. So I was by myself most of the time. And so the only time I got to really express myself was when I was in the drama room. Okay. I, then I kind of grew out of that. So that's pretty much me. Alright. Were you always passionate about drama being a career choice or did it develop over time? No. When I was young, I actually wanted to be a veterinarian. I think I was more fascinated with the word than the actual job. Yeah. You know, veterinarian is a big word when you're like six, seven, and it you're is. like, what is your ambition? And I said, my ambition is to become veterinarian. a veterinarian. Yeah, we tend to do that all the time, right? the big words hurt. Yeah, and then um, one day my father took me to dissect a frog and that was the end of that <laughs> Um I joined the drama club really because I wanted a reason to not go home early. Yeah. Like a good reason, so I'm not going to argue with friends or nothing, but I wanted a positive reason to be like two hours late. Um, but also doing home. something you But know. also doing something constructive. Yeah. Constructive because I didn't know I like drama and I didn't it. it was just one of the co curricular activities that I auditioned for the club and I got it. Right. It's while in the drama club that the passion for it really manifested. And of course, with the guidance of the drama teacher Susan, we were, we were able to. It was an escape for most of us, to be honest. So we all kind of realized your true potential while in the drama club. How did you get started in the theatre industry? Um, so, commercial theatre, I was a friend of mine, my bestie, she was doing front of house, box office for Daily Harris. Okay. So, so she just had theory ticket in her friend and she got sick, so she asked me to do it. So I was like, okay, whatever. So I had theory ticket, a box office now and everything, and one day Daily Harris comes up to me and she says, um, I needed to learn new scripts because you're going on stage next week. Just like that? Just like that. Auntie, what are you saying? She said, yeah, I need to learn the lines. Now, I've never done like a commercial play before. Never like the big audience. We yeah. just do JC, DC, in front of my peers and right. stuff. And now I'm being charged with the task of performing on stage in front of like 200 to 300 people. In one week. Now, everybody's get like six weeks um, to rehearse, to learn lines and all these things. We have one week. Me. Anyways, um, we did it. Initially, it was very, it was very funny. I was moving very weird. I was talking very weird, coming nervous and all of that. But eventually, you know, um, because I did have the knowledge, I was just terrified because it was the first time. But you saw your potential. She did, and I also had a lot of guidance. You know, she was there. My drama teacher happened to be in the play as well. So it was just a great experience. That's the first time my father actually saw me performing. And I think that's when he accepted me doing drama because he was never for it. He was all about the traditional jobs. Yeah. Listen, me need to be a teacher, a liar, a doctor, a nurse, <laughs> drama. Nah, for real. Okay. What? Well, tell us a little bit about your roles in Sprinter and your lead character in Yardy. So Sprinter, my role in Sprinter was Carrie Ann Hall. Um, this is a country girl from a Kingston school on the track team and she realizes that this young man who is very 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 talented um, but also very distracted yes and so my character really was his voice of reason the mother figure missing in his life because he doesn't have a mother yeah. at home and so he was all he was just all over the place and initially he was doing things for everybody else and not for him 
And so my character was really to say, listen, you need to do this for yourself first before you can make for anybody else. Right. And I also appreciated that we were not intimate because usually, <laughs> no, I said it to Storm, usually when you have a lead male and female character, everybody's expecting them to be boyfriend or girlfriend or get romantic in the end. Um, and it's not always about that. We wanted to show our regular Jamaican story um, in our in our regular environment. I'm going to tell you something, you know. People are finding that all the way are so small feet and people are from the Yeah, that's expecting. I know like that was a bad they, they, they still think that now, today. Really? Yes. And so it was very important for him to create a story that says that we have regular problems. And we have more than that. We live regular lives yeah. like everybody else, you know, and it, was, it also showed the beauty of Jamaica, the landscape. Yeah, it did. We tend to see one aspect of Jamaica, you know, like being fans and, you know, that kind of thing, which is a part of our culture, but then there is this, you know? And so I appreciated that I was a part of that project. Um, Yardy now. Yardy. Yardy for me was just a beautiful love story. First, a gangster story, but it's also a love story. Um, and my character. Someone asked me that question and I was like, there's no way my character could have been a weak female. No, or, never. You know? Because I was like, first of all, she's Jamaican. You know? And she's a Jamaican with a child wanting to protect her child from all these things. So we're aggressive, but we're also nurturers. Um, and so all of that came out while doing yarding with pull from my mother and my auntie. And, yeah. You know, Idris was also very specific in what he wanted. And so he can't say this. Wow. It, yes, it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, the very married Idris Elba. I'm, I'm, a, mm -hmm. I'm aware. Okay, so, so we have many other that are aware, but they don't care. Yeah, we don't. They don't care. But yeah, he he was he was very specific in what he wanted, so it was very easy for me, you know, to um kind of jump into the character and deliver. But of course, working with Amel was great. Yeah. I really enjoyed your characters in both films though. I um, felt myself in your shoes. You know, it was very empathetic and everything is like I was just living through your eyes. And I'm sure you're like that in real life. Uh, like what? Like, determined. like very determined. Oh, me? Yeah. yeah, girl. Most of the times I'm a fast girl. But outside of that, <laughs> outside of that, because you see, when it comes down to my craft, you see that when I'm working. When yeah. I'm not working, I'm very chill. But when I'm working, I'm very focused. Um, and then because I think I have a responsibility to Jamaica as well. To me, of course, you know. Yeah. But because we, there's so much talent in this country. We have a lot of talent. We just don't have the opportunity. And so whenever I find myself with an opportunity, or I know someone who finds themselves with an opportunity. It's very important for us to deliver so that people know that, yes, we are here and we can. That is so So true. that we can bring more opportunities into the country for people, you know, with exceptional talent. Speaking of opportunity, if you had the chance to impact any Jamaican who aspires to be in this industry, how would you go about that and what advice would you give to them? Um, the first thing, I try to set up some kind of, well I want to build several theatres or some kind of um, multifaceted place. Yeah. Um, we need workshops. Like you need to know you can you need to study the craft and study different techniques. You can always learn something at the drama club. But you have to start somewhere. So community groups or the drama club in your school or if we can go into inner cities and, and earlier I was working with the Ministry of National Security and they asked me to go to different um, juvenile centers across the country. And I was working with these kids. So can I tell you the boys are actually easier to work with than the girls? Really? True. Yeah, cause the girl them full attitude. You know? The girl them going. But I loved working with them, and so that's where it needs to start, especially with with kids who feel like people have already given up on them, and so there's no option. Oh. Yeah. And some of these people, them, them talented. There was a girl she DJ from now till next week, and she can sing too. And I'm like, yo, it's so unfortunate that you're in this position. Right. Or if only you were given a better opportunity, you know. And so if I can give these persons opportunities then that would be my aim well that is my aim eventually and then my um advice is to just always be professional always be ready you never know who's watching that is true. you know i did a short film and it's a short film that i did that in the in the uk 
for Idris and you know his ex- executive producers to see it and be like, oh, who is this girl? And fly to Jamaica wow. to meet me and you know audition me in person. And so you know that was a two day shoot. I didn't get much money, you know, because it was a short film. But it was a great project and I wanted to be a part of it. And me put out 150 and everybody else did. Yeah. And so you, because you never know who is watching, you always have to turn up. And also if you have respect for your craft, there's never an option of doing less than, you know. And so this is something that you really want to do. You should put a lot of effort in it. Of course, the money and the prizes and all that are bonuses. It is. But when you really realize your true potential, I think that's like the ultimate, ultimate. Were there any opportunities that you've received that you passed? Um, I hardly pass upon opportunities. I, I hardly get like bad opportunities coming my way that I feel compelled to, you know, have to give up on. Um, there's probably like one or two projects that I've never done. But usually I get good projects. Yeah. Um, and then it's not like I'd pass up an opportunity because of the type of character or anything. Like I never leave myself and I never put myself in a box. So once I'm not stepping outside of my morals or I'm not doing anything illegal and this is a, a good story, no matter what it is, I'm always willing to try. It. Right. Um, and so like that would lead to something else. Like my biggest lesson that I've learned in this industry, and I learned it while doing Yardi, funny enough, is learning to be comfortable, vulnerable which helps you to not limit yourself. So when I was doing Yardi, I had to do a, an intimate scene. Yeah, so you did. freaking out about this Listen, did you ever the past set? <laughs> Tell me about they that. Had, they had to close the set. Like, everybody had to leave. Yeah. And it was just me and Amel and the caravan. It just was in, in the next room. I had to drink probably two glasses of something because wow. I was freaking out. I said, my mother, I got to this, father. I go see this, I'm in naked. <laughs> Listen to me the word. I was freaking out. Like, it just coming out of the room. I was sitting on the ground in my robe. I'm here, I said, and peace. Oh my God, do this. Oh my God, do this. And I'm saying, you know, sometimes people have a drink to kind of calm them down before they see. And after I do it, I say, you know, you know, it shouldn't take me so long to work like myself that. up to, yeah. you know, doing this because this is it's a human activity you know and i'm telling a a a human story and i have a responsibility to be very true to this character and i mean there were nipple covers and all of that i was just freaking out because i was in a very vulnerable position and i'm like you know i'm with strangers and all of that but it's not about you but in that time did you feel like you were straying away from your values or you Um, were being true to yourself no i was just I was just very nervous about people looking at me because then there's also the self-esteem issues. Oh, I'm skinny and I'm so dark. You're hot. And no, but I wasn't thinking that yeah. in that moment. I was just thinking of people looking at me and judging me, you know, not thinking about being in the moment and the beauty of the moment and what that moment in the film represented. Right. Um, and so coming out of it, I was like, you know, Shanta, they really need to learn from this too. Because there are scenes where people okay say it's not something as hard as well not hard but sex but it's a drug scene you know and i'm a drug addict addict, and i have to be sniffing cocaine and acting crazy that's also a very vulnerable position to be in you know and people still have to go watch me and judge me and so i still freak out it's just what you're doing and what you're allowing yourself to do and stepping out of your comfort zone because at the end of the day this is someone's story and they have a responsibility to give a voice to this voiceless person yeah you know were there any opportunities that you took but regret taking? No, you know, I don't regret any opportunity. There was one opportunity, I did something and I was like, oh my God, it's like working with the persons, that was difficult, but I'm glad I did the work because it was important, Right. you know? Um, so there are people that you have to be mindful of because if you don't want to put yourself through a particular situation, I don't think it's worth it because it doesn't make sense you have to work and stay focused and you're uncomfortable or you're in a very toxic environment mm-hmm. but um, and, and then I don't believe in regretting things like if I make the decision to me I'm going to do it you never do it and if it doesn't work out then it's a situation I need to learn from yeah. but I'm not going to say oh I wish I never did it because 
I needed that experience to help me to grow, you know, grow and assist with dealing with other experiences. Right? Are there any films or plays or movies that you can talk about coming up for us to look out for? Um, you can never talk about this. You can never talk about these things. Um, but I am... Can I talk about that? I will be doing a series for TVJ, a local series here, season 2, um, next month. The next month. Which series? Pick it on one or two. I guess oh. I can talk about it. Yeah. So shooting Pick it on one or two. And then after Pick it on one I might be doing a production here. And then I might be... But I'll keep y'all posted. Of course she will. I'll keep y'all posted. Final question. This is kind of personal and although we already spoke about it a little bit earlier. I'm sure everyone shares the same sentiment. But you can just tell me what it was like working with Idris. <laughs> Wow! Like, I was just trying hey, to keep composed all along. But you get nervous to come here and say, blow out a serious question this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's serious, Chantal. Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> it's just cool, man. It just is... He's actually way more down to earth than people would imagine. Is it because he's a big guy? Yeah. Like him tall and him big and him sexy. Him tall and him big. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's sick. He seems very intimidating, but he's not. He's virgin. We call him Uncle Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like that attraction that you have? I don't know. I don't have it. You, he's you more like you a, didn't have it in the moment, or you didn't have it at all. Um, I mean, I always admired him. Like he, like, I admire pretty things, you know. Yes. Pretty people, pretty, pretty things, things, pretty food. I admire things. You understand? But like working with him and of course meeting his lovely wife who was his girlfriend at the time. They were very, very, very cool people and I just, he was also so supportive of me and wanting the best for me in this right. industry and all that. I mean, I say, you know, he's genuinely very nice and he's a very nice and chill person. Um, and he's also very shy. Really? Yes. He's, he'd be like, oh man. Oh, my God. Couldn't tell. Couldn't yeah, tell that's what I'm all. saying. He, he would seem like that, but he's very, he's like a regular person. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah. oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it, guys. That was Chantal Jackson. Please to tell our fans where they can find you to support your movement. I'm on all social media platforms. Chantal Jackson at Chantal Jackson on Instagram, Chantal Jackson on Facebook. I don't really use Twitter, which is terrible, but I will. Eventually. Stop looking at me like that. The caramel is looking at me. Very strange. <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you what I'm with Twitter. It's when Twitter just come out, I really didn't understand what was happening. Girl, it was very me confusing. Either. Me either. And I was like, why may I put myself through this? Do you think it's necessary? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, if you want me, you can call me. Right. right. Yeah. And things come on TV, just see CNN and them stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but on Twitter, I think it's at Chantal Jackson. If it's not Chantal Jackson, it's Jackson Chantal. Try one of them something. Guys, and if you've never watched Yardy or Springtail, please, what are some places you can Um, I was recently in Ananda Alert. Okay. That was by Bartlett. I've done work with most of my plays are with Dela Harris. Um, Bitter Than Water, Country Wedding, 